This is the first custom drone that I did myself. It's an analog drone with iFlight pieces and some other things that I put in it. I recently installed the GPS on this and I did some tests with it and I had to fly it with analog, right? And I realized the difference between analog and digital is huge and I don't want to fly any more analog drones. So today what I'm going to do is to turn this drone into digital and I'm going to record all the steps so in case that you want to do the same with your drone. Of course, first thing first, let's remove the props and everything else on top. This drone has a analog VTX which is connected with a, a plug and I'm going to reuse those cables to solder directly into the Vista if there is no issue and then just remove the, the cables here for the camera and I'm going to change this uh, XM Plus to a crossfire since it's what I normally use now. So one good thing about this card is that everything is marked directly in the card and you can read what each pad is which makes things easier and you don't have to go to the internet to find the diagram which because the one that I actually found was wrong or it's not the same card maybe not the same revision or something and this the Vista has to be connected to VVAT or the battery voltage or a 9 volt pad but this card doesn't have 9 volt so I'm going to have to connect battery here, up here, on battery. I have ground next to it. And then I'm going to use R3 and TX3 for the communication. And then I'm going to be using R1 and TX1 for the crossfire. Things are going to get a little bit cramped in here. But that's what I'm going to do. First I'm going to check that I have physical space for the Vista here and check that the camera fits properly there and then I'm going to start soldering the cables. I was thinking that I'm, I was going to use this same cable connector that an analog VTX has but um, it has only 5 volts and I, I didn't have a an RX on this one. So the camera works well here, there is no problem with that. The Vista has uh, the 20 millimeter mount and that one I have a little bit of an issue because I don't have screws long enough to go through the frame and through the Vista to hold it. So I'm gonna have to find out how to do that. And the next step right now is to un solder this cable because it's too short. Solder some new longer cables and start soldering in my flight controller. Remember one thing that is important when you are going to solder is that the RX of the Vista has to go to the TX of the flight controller and the TX of the Vista has to go to the RX of the flight controller. The green one is connected to the RX on the Vista, which means that it goes to the TX 
on the flight controller. As always before connecting to power, even if I have the even if I have the, the short saver, I'm gonna test with my multimeter. Okay, no magic smoke, looks good. Now we need to configure in better flight. I'm gonna take note of the ports that I use so I know where I, which TX and RX is for the crossfire and which one is for the Vista. Now let's see what we have to change in better flight. The first thing to look at is where my ports are. So the crossfire has to be enabled with the serial RX and in my case I have it in UR2 and then I have to change the Vista MSP so I can get OSD and all those kind of information so I turn on UR3 MSP for the Vista my GPS is still in UR6 and I don't touch that next I need to change the protocol that the receiver is going to be communicating with the flight controller in this case, I'm changing from SBOS because I had an XM Plus before to Crossfire, and we do it here on the receiver drop down menu. That done just to make sure that telemetry is on, so I can use it with the Crossfire, and nothing else needs to be changed. All right, so now we have transform this uh, NASCO into HD. The procedure was not very complicated. Um, I think the most difficult part, well, number one is to actually find a Vista or a, a air unit because they can't, they, they are not available these days. But if you have that, then it's just to remove what you had before, solder this one, making sure that you have one RX and one TX available in your card. Uh, and then making sure that you have the physical space to put all this. I think where I spent more time was to actually find the right screws and make sure that things fit in the right place because I already had many other pieces in place. So it was not a like a, a build that I was starting from zero and then you can build a little bit more carefully. But here I had to go under cables and so on and so off. I think it's it's not a it's not a complicated procedure. I invite you to do yours as well if you have an an analog uh, drone that you want to turn into uh, digital. And now it's just time for me to go and fly this one and see how good I did with my transformation. So thank you very much for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye.